Will Bitcoin go to 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 or even $500,000 per Bitcoin? In this video, I'm going to give you my Bitcoin price prediction for the upcoming crypto bull market. In this video, I'm going to give you all the arguments, facts and proof that is backing up this price prediction. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Mitchell Wireman and at the age of 28, I had built and sold three different companies and I reinvested that money into crypto, making multiple millions in the market. One of my latest ventures is a Bitcoin mining farm where we're managing 80,000 plus machines for our investors worldwide. So you can definitely say that I'm quite deep into the crypto space and that part of my job is to monitor this market and all of the developments within it very closely. In this video, we're going to discuss the following. Why this could be the last parabolic crypto bull market, the impact of the great pivot on the crypto market, macroeconomic factors favorable to Bitcoin, why gold is slowly losing its prestige, and how I think the 2025 crypto bull market will play out. Okay, before we dive in, I need to make this disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. Nothing in this video should be considered financial advice. I'm making this video solely for educational purposes and you should always do your own research and or consult with a professional financial advisor. And if you want to see more similar videos like this one, be sure to like this video and to subscribe to my channel because every week I'm going to upload a valuable video or tutorial in which I'm going to help you to maximize your profit as a crypto or Bitcoin investor. So now it's time to start with part one of this video, which is why this could be the last parabolic crypto bull market. Bitcoin was launched in 2009, meaning that right now, as of recording this video, Bitcoin is somewhere around 15 years old. On the other hand, the internet was invented or launched to the public in 1983 meaning that the internet right now is around 43 years old. It's a grown, mature person. Why am I making this comparison? Well, the crypto market right now has a lot of similarities with the internet space in its early days. So far, we have seen that the crypto market moves in more or less four-year cycles. During every four years uh, in the crypto market, we see a bull market where the price of crypto projects shoot up exponentially. It's very common to see 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, or even a thousand percent returns for some smaller cap crypto projects. But in the bear market following, we see that the same projects drop 70, 80, 90 percent and lose its value. This cycle kept on repeating itself a few times right now. And investors that have spotted this pattern have been able to make life-changing money by accumulating during bear markets and cashing out their positions during bull markets. Now, let's go back to the internet. If you look at Amazon stock, for example, in its early days, and you look at its price action during that period, you could see that the price of Amazon could easily go up with 200, 300, 400, or even 500% in a very short period. But it could also drop with 60, 70, or 80% just as quickly. Doesn't that remind you of the crypto market right now? Amazon is still volatile, but over time it has become less volatile because more and more investors understand the internet and e-commerce. The swings have become less crazy because even with a smaller dip in the price of Amazon, there will be a lot more buyers that are going to buy up Amazon stock. So the chances are very small that you'll ever see a 60, 70 or 80% dip in the price of Amazon right now. And I expect the same to happen with Bitcoin as Bitcoin as an asset matures. And that is why this could very well be the final parabolic crypto bull market that we will see. Which brings me to the next part of the video which is the impact that the great pivot will have on the crypto market. For the longest time, banks and governments have been anti-crypto because they find it very hard to control and in many times, crypto directly undermines their relevance. For example, banks are becoming increasingly controlling over what you do with your money. For every transaction above a certain amount, you even need to ask for their approval. You need to upload uh, contracts, documents, invoices, and you pay quite high fees to make use of the bank. And on top of that, you even run the risk of losing all of your money when a bank goes bust. Crypto offers a better alternative, quick, easy and cheap transfers without having to ask anyone for permission. 
this disrupts the traditional financial system, just like Airbnb disrupted hotels and Uber disrupted the taxi industry. So banks and their allies in the government and yeah, trust me, banks have very big budgets and they use those budgets to lobby in government. So banks and the governments have basically worked together to launch campaigns against crypto, calling it a currency for criminals and pedophiles. But interestingly enough, most criminal transactions actually happen in cash and banks have actually been involved in large scandals where they were involved in laundering cartel money or criminal money. So in my opinion, this is very hypocrite what they're doing. And their campaign against crypto was only meant to upkeep their own relevance. But now banks and large institutions are seeing that it is impossible to stop the evolution of Bitcoin and the crypto space. There's this famous saying, if you can't beat them, join them. And that is exactly what is happening right now. Financial institutions are pivoting their strategy. And I call this the great pivot. Not too long ago, earlier this year, we saw the approval of the Bitcoin spot ETFs and all of the top asset managers worldwide came out with their own Bitcoin ETFs and other Bitcoin related products. And this is a huge milestone in the evolution of the crypto space because this bridges the gap between the traditional financial market and the crypto space. The top 10 asset managers in the US alone are currently managing roughly $27 trillion of assets. Imagine if only a few percent of this will flow into the crypto space. That means that trillions are going to hit the market very soon. We've already seen that BlackRock's Bitcoin spot ETF was the fastest growing ETF in history. And this shows how much demand there is for Bitcoin and crypto related products in the financial market. These Bitcoin spot ETFs make it a lot easier for financial institutions to get exposure to Bitcoin. And we're already seeing this. The pension fund of the state of Wisconsin has already announced that they're going to buy Bitcoin through this Bitcoin spot ETF. Also, a few months ago, we have uh, seen an announcement by the largest pension fund in the world, the Japanese pension fund that is currently managing around $1.4 trillion worth of assets that they're also considering buying into crypto through a spot ETF. Now let's talk about the banks. Most banks are publicly traded companies, meaning that they need to disclose their holdings to the public. And if you look closer at the bank's holdings, you can see that more and more banks are now also holding Bitcoin or holding shares of Bitcoin spot ETFs, which gives them exposure to Bitcoin. This means that the biggest critics of Bitcoin, the banks, have now actually turned towards buying Bitcoin and aggressively offering it to their customer base. So the great pivot is playing out right in front of our eyes and it's happening in real time. The upcoming crypto bull market will be a bull market driven by institutional money and we've never seen this before. Which brings us to part three of this video, macroeconomic factors that are favorable to Bitcoin. Governments are always printing money. We call this inflation and economists around the world all sort of agree that a 2% inflation rate is healthy. Why? Because it forces people to spend or invest their money because they know that one unit of money can get them more today than in a few years from now. And you want money to be circulating in an economy. But nowadays we all have some kind of PTSD from the global pandemic that happened not too long ago. Because of the pandemic, many economies around the world were forced to completely shut down and governments had to reside to printing massive amounts of money to keep their economies afloat. One could argue that this was for the greater good, but many people experienced in real time how governments could create money out of thin air. For most people, this was an eye opener how money printing worked. And now more than ever, inflation has become part of the daily conversation, not just by analysts, investors and economists, but by normal people. Our money is devaluing at a very rapid pace and people are becoming desperate to find places to park their hard earned money in order to protect themselves against this inflation. And of course, there are many great assets that you can invest in to do so. For example, stocks, bonds, real estate, and even watches. But none of the returns that you can generate with those assets can keep up with Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin was dubbed the best asset class of the past decade because between 2010 and 2020, it generated on average a 230% annual return. And this has attracted many people towards Bitcoin. Bitcoin is slowly becoming the asset class of choice for people and institutions that want to protect themselves or hedge themselves against inflation. This also has to do with the declining prestige of gold. Which brings us to part four of this video. Why gold is slowly losing its prestige. For many centuries, gold has been an important vehicle for people and organizations to build wealth and prosperity. From the Egyptians to the Romans, many great societies have valued gold for its worth and its beauty. This has led gold to become the most valuable asset in the world today. Right now, the total value of gold as an asset class is somewhere around 15 trillion. That's 15 with 12 zeros behind it. But in recent years, the trust in gold has decreased. This has to do with the fact that it's very difficult to store and trade gold. Imagine that a war breaks out and you have to walk with your wheelbarrow full of gold over the street. That is just simply impractical. In a world where everything is slowly becoming more digital, physical gold is slowly losing its appeal. If you look at what the price of gold has done in the past few years compared to other assets, you see that the price of gold has shown a less spectacular growth. Additionally, the gold market is heavily manipulated. Large banks and institutions have often been accused and even convicted for manipulating the gold and silver market. For example, in 2020, JP Morgan was fined almost a billion dollars for manipulating the gold and silver market. And that is why more and more people are looking for a better alternative for gold. And it seems like Bitcoin is filling up that gap right now. Which brings us to the final part of this video, the part that you probably was were looking forward to the most, which is how I think that the 2025 crypto bull market is probably going to play out. I personally think that this is going to be the biggest crypto bull market we've seen in history. It will be a bull market driven by institutional money. There are many banks and financial institutions that want to get customers for their uh, Bitcoin and crypto related products. And trust me, these institutions have massive marketing budgets. I think in the next bull market, there will be no hiding from crypto. Every soccer match, tennis match, Formula One competition will be packed with crypto ads left and right. As these financial institutions give their stamp of approval to crypto, your regular financial advisor will also start to recommend crypto and Bitcoin to everyone. And this is where network effects start to kick in and the late majority of investors will also start to enter the Bitcoin space. So I believe that mass adoption is imminent. So what do I think that the price of Bitcoin will do this bull market? Well, if we look at past data, we see that Bitcoin tops out somewhere around one to one and a half years after the Bitcoin halving. So let's have a closer look at that data. In 2013, the price of Bitcoin was up 8,800% approximately one year after the Bitcoin halving. Then in 2017, the price of Bitcoin was up 285% one year after the halving. And finally in 2021, the price of Bitcoin was up approximately 548% 12 months after the halving. Looking at this data, I personally think that Bitcoin will hit a price target of roughly $200,000 per Bitcoin. That is approximately a 300% increase from its Bitcoin halving price, which was roughly around $64,000. I think this is a conservative estimate, but I prefer to be more conservative than over optimistic. In this video, I gave you all my arguments, facts, and proof why I think that this is going to be the biggest crypto bull market we've ever seen. Some argue that the price of Bitcoin could even exceed my price prediction of $200,000 per Bitcoin. Some argue it could go all the way up to 500K per Bitcoin or 1 million per Bitcoin. But you have to decide for yourself what you believe and what you expect based on your own assumptions of the market. But at least you now understand how I look at things. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe to my channel for more because every week I'm going to be posting more videos like this, more useful tutorials, more insights, um, and I'm going to help you to maximize your profit as a crypto investor in the upcoming crypto bull market. 
All right, that being said, I've also linked two more videos up here, which I highly recommend you to check out. And um, I'll see you in the next one.